You're listening to Linux News Log, separating the Linux and open source signal from the noise. Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC2 at Quicksurf Internet Studios. Linux News Log is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. And with that, let's go ahead and get into uh, some of the cool stories for this week. Starting off over at The Verge, Valve announces... Steam OS, a living room operating system for games. That is correct. Valve is done teasing. Today, Valve has revealed Steam OS, its own operating system based on Linux. It's designed for living room gaming PCs. It's the first step towards Valve's Steam Box, which is its vision for an open video game console. It combines Steam's preeminent video game digital distribution platform with a user interface designed for TVs all on top of the Linux platform. And it will be free. That's right. So uh, it will be available soon as a free standalone operating system for living room machines, according to the company. So uh, this is pretty awesome. Um, I will definitely be checking this out and see uh, just to see uh, what's up with this. And I encourage everybody else who is interested in gaming and Linux to do the same. From rttnews.com, Red Hat Q2 profit rises but shares slip. Uh, Linux software provider Red Hat on Monday reported a rise in second quarter profit helped mainly by a 16% growth in revenue driven by strong subscription revenue. Both earnings and revenues for the quarter came in ahead of Wall Street expectations. Nevertheless, Red Hat shares dropped over 7% in after hours trade on the New York Stock Exchange. So. Uh, we'll see how it goes. You know, there's this is just one quarter out of four for this year. So uh, we'll uh, see, you know, continue to monitor, monitor Red Hat and see what goes on with them. From HispanicBusiness.com, IBM plans to invest $1 billion in Linux and open source innovation on power systems. IBM has said that it is planning to invest $1 billion in new Linux and open source technologies for IBM's power system servers. The investment aims to help clients capitalize on big data and cloud computing with modern systems built to handle the new wave of applications coming to the data center in the post-PC era. So, uh, pretty interesting. Definitely be uh, seeing how that turns out. From the Wall Street Journal, Lenovo thanks server systems certified for Oracle VM and Oracle Linux. That's right. Uh, Lenovo today has announced its Think Server Rack portfolio has been tested and certified with Oracle Linux and Oracle VM. Certification testing was performed using Oracle Linux with the unbreakable enterprise kernel, which is optimized for enterprise software and hardware. With this certification, Lenovo's Think Server Rack portfolio is now ready for running mission critical and virtualized enterprise Oracle applications and offers customers a versatile cost-effective, open standards-based solution. They have also achieved Oracle Linux Ready and Oracle VM Ready status through the Oracle Partner Network. So pretty cool. From uh, fudzilla.com, new specs for Sailship OS Jola. That's right, Migo still has legs. The first smartphone to come with the Linux-based Sailfish OS will arrive before the end of this year, and official specs have been announced. The Jola will support a height of 4.5 inches and feature a display with 960 by 540 resolution. Under the hood will be a Qualcomm Snapdragon 1.4 gigahertz processor, a gig of RAM, 16 gigs of storage, and as as well as a micro SD expansion slot. Smartphone will also have an 8 megapixel autofocus rear camera with an LED flash as well as a 2 megapixel front camera. Selfish was developed from the Mego OS, which was developed by Nokia, but scrapped after Microsoft paid the company to use the Windows phone on its handset. Uh, The hardware sounds an awful lot like your standard issue uh, smartphone uh, these days. Um, You know, I'm curious to see what the software is going to be like. If anybody can get their hands on this and actually get this going, let me know. 
linux at quicksurf.com. From PC World in their Linux line, the Linux and open source news and advice blog, device spanning Ubuntu Touch OS gets an October 17th launch date. Now we talked about this uh, on the, our sister show here over here at Quicksurf Internet Studios, The Geekinator, on the last episode. For those of you who are not subscribed to that, uh, or for, I'm sorry, for those of you who are subscribed to that, this may be covering some uh, uh, previously covered ground, but for those of you who only subscribe to Linux Newslog, this is news. The audacious Ubuntu Edge smartphone crowdfunding experience might be dead, may be dead, but the dream of merging phone and OS PC lives on PC OS lives on. Ubuntu Touch, the form factor spanning mobile operating system intended to power the edge, finally has a release date, October 17th, alongside Ubuntu Linux 13.10. So you'll be able to get this. Uh, they are committed to delivering uh, on the Ubuntu Touch. It won't run on every device out there. However, uh, you'll be able to run it on the Samsung Galaxy Nexus, uh, the Nexus 4, as well as the Nexus 7 and Nexus 10. So pretty awesome. Um, basically, Touch is a slick mobile interface for Ubuntu. Um, beyond smartphones and tablets, the Ubuntu Touch can launch the full-blown desktop version of Ubuntu when docked with a desktop monitor. The idea is one device to rule them all, and if by them all you mean smartphones, tablets, and PCs, then don't be surprised if this really takes off in a big way. I'll be uh, looking to see. If, if anybody can actually get this working, let me know. I would love to check it out, especially if you're in the Bay Area. From Silicon Angle, Red Hat teams up with Dot Cloud to promote open hypervisor alternative. In the software-defined era, the hardware abstraction layer doesn't have to be a hypervisor. Sensing the winds of change, Red Hat is putting its weight behind an open source Linux container engine called Docker. Developed by Dot Cloud, Docker takes advantage of system level functions to encapsulate any application and its dependencies as a lightweight container that can run that can run on bare metal as seamlessly as it would in a virtualized private cloud or public cloud environment. The main, the main benefit of the technology is that it consumes considerably less resources than traditional virtualization frameworks, such as VMware ESX and Citrix Zen Server. So, kind of interesting. Um, I have some questions about implementation-specific details, so I need to do a little more research on this, but uh, pretty cool concept nonetheless. From open-zfs.org, there has been an OpenZFS launch announcement, September 17th, 2013. Today, we announce OpenZFS, the truly open source successor to the ZFS project. Now, ZFS, for those of you who are not aware of this, is the Zettabyte file system. And it is, well, let me just read here. ZFS is the world's most advanced file system in active development for over a decade. Recent development has continued in the open, and OpenZFS is the new formal name for this open community of developers, users, and companies improving, using, and building on ZFS. Founded by members of the Linux, FreeBSD, Mac OS X, and Illumnos uh, communities, including Matt Ahrens, one of the two original authors of ZFS, the OpenZFS community brings together over a hundred software developers from these platforms. You can read more about OpenZFS at our website, http colon slash slash open dash ZFS dot org. So the goals of OpenZFS are to raise awareness of the quality, utility, and availability of OpenZFS by consolidating documentation for developers and sysadmins alike, and by engaging with the larger tech community through conferences, meetups, and online interactions. To encourage open communication about ongoing efforts to improve uh, open source OpenZFS by uh, creating a collaborative website and mailing list to discuss OpenZFS code changes and to ensure consistent reliability, functionality, and performance of all distributions of OpenZFS by making it easier to share code between platforms by creating cross-platform tests and by encouraging cross-platform code reviews. So, uh, Pretty awesome. Now, the reason why I am even talking about this is I'm a huge advocate of OpenZFS. Uh, my primary 
home server here at the house. It's the one right down here, just outside the frame that you can't see. A big giant black box that's got a bunch of drives in it. Runs FreeBSD. Uh, and uh, I heavily use ZFS, which is supported natively on FreeBSD. So huge proponent of OpenZFS. It's one of those few file systems that you know, super easy to manage. It's really bulletproof. If you don't want to lose data, ZFS is the way to go. Um, you know, it's not the fastest file system out there, but that speed comes or that, that reduced performance comes at the benefit of there's a very little likelihood that you're actually going to lose data. So Anyway, definitely check it out. You can get ZFS, you know, like this says, in a variety of platforms. Uh, FreeBSD, in my opinion, is one of the best free ways of getting it. Uh, if you if you are a Solaris shop, it is supported in Solaris. Uh, you can get it as uh, uh, in, in Linux and in OS X if you really want to go that way. Although a lot of OS X platforms, unless you're running a Mac Pro or something, you know, ZFS would be really hard to do for really large storage arrays. But at any rate, uh, pretty awesome. Definitely check it out. And with that, uh, that's all I've got for this episode. So uh, thanks for watching and subscribing. And I will see all of you on the next episode. I'll see you then. Bye.